Post game is presented by GMC. We are professional grade. Joe Musso alongside Emery Hunt, Brian McFadden joining the conversation as well. Gentlemen, this was no style points, but Thursday nighters never have to be. Dallas comes away with the win, not necessarily in convincing fashion against the divisional foe. What's the one thing you walk away feeling from this game, Emery? That Dallas actually showed up defensively. They played an assignment uh, sound football. It was alignment assignment execution. We came in fully expecting ja uh, the Giants to move them off the point of attack to move them off the football. Dallas maintained the line of scrimmage. They didn't get pushed back. They were able to stonewall the run game for the Giants so much so that the Giants got away from it, which they probably shouldn't have. And that got to played into the Dallas' strength of, hey, we want to throw. We want to unleash this pass rush. We want you guys to get back there and throw it. So I thought the defense really answered the call on a short week to stop the run. Yeah, massive step forward, even missing some pieces in that front, Mac. What did you see from that front seven? 1.1 yards per carry for the Giants. Their fewest in a game since 1989. Something had to have flipped here for this week four meeting. Uh, they were physical, much more physical than what we've seen uh, throughout three, three, three games of play. I mean, the last two games clearly was atrocious, but uh, tonight they were the more physical dominant group in the trenches, and they did a great job, Joe, tackling for the most part. You know, we saw Motor make some guys miss. Devin Singletary was able to make a few guys miss, but in totality as a team uh, for four quarters, the Cowboys did a great job in tackling, not allowing yak yards after the catch. And like I said, it just was a, the more physical group. And this is something that you would like to see from the Dallas Cowboys when you talk about the issues that were surfacing over the last two weeks. If they can play more stout, sound football and be mm -hmm. more physical, of course, we know they have the talent to be able to score points against any opposing off uh, defense. But it, the concerns have been the defense. They answered the call tonight. Just 26 rushing yards allowed, but unfortunately, maybe a loss within this win. Micah Parsons was carted from the sideline to the locker room. We'll bring you all the latest on that injury when we have it. But looking at that left ankle, let's shift to the other side here. And the Giants offensively continue to struggle. And there were moments that could have really changed the flow of this game. In the first half, a couple free plays. In the second half, Daniel Jones's inability to push the ball downfield. Emory. What did you see in that aspect? Because it looks like a guy who's seeing the game properly right now but at times just not physically able to make the plays. That's a great way to set it up because it's, you can understand what's going on, but can you make the play? He's not able to make the play deep down the field. So there's an, an invisible cap or umbrella on this offense. Coming into this game in our pregame show, I brought up how every pass we've seen from the Giants has been under 10 yards. And what we saw today, a lot of the passes were quick, short passes. BMAC touched on it perfectly. Dallas was a great open field tackling team tonight. So that's what the Giants are banking on. Hey, we'll get the ball to Wondell Robinson, who is the number one high school running back coming out of high school in his class. So we know he's good with the ball in his hands. We know Malik Neighbors is a, is a yak guy, a guy that could do a great job after the catch if you miss the tackle. Dallas made those tackles, and the Cowboys, uh, I'm sorry, the Giants, couldn't really threaten deep down the field. You brought up those two free plays. That was the quintessential example of can Daniel Jones take advantage of the plays that are there to be made? And he wasn't able to. And this is shades of 2022. Remember back in Daniel Jones's breakout year when he threw 15 touchdown You're passes? You're doing air quotes right now. Yeah, so, but you know, can't right? see you on screen. He said, <laughs> he said breakout year. Breakout 15 Dang. touchdown passes. But they played a lot of games like they played tonight. A lot of close games that the other team, you know, we saw Lamar Jackson throw a football down the field to a fullback D lineman. And that's how Giants are winning games, right? Mm -hmm. So now they're faced with these same tight contested matchups where you're going to need your quarterback to play above the X's and O's and they can't but these games Giants moving forward are going to be a lot of close games but we may see more of the same like we saw tonight. Yeah, yeah the, the air yards was something that was missing in Daniel's Daniel Jones's game tonight everything else I was applauding what he was doing to your point Emory he saw the football field extremely well he wasn't pressing the issue he was just taking what the defense was giving him but in those small opportunities where he had shots down the football field and his wide receiver created separation the arm just became flat I mean Slayton had opportunities I think it was two opportunities and one of them was a free play mm -hmm. and you know when you get a free play wide receivers are taught to run deep because you have a free play he had a step or two on the defender but he had to wait for the football even in that Hail Mary attempt he came up short of trying to get to the end zone. And when you watch Daniel Jones this season and watching him coming out of college from Duke years ago that led to him being a first-rounder, you didn't really question the arm strength 
we knew he didn't have a Josh Allen-like arm, but now you're starting to see some issues show up in the long game when it comes to taking shots down the football field. Because think about this, guys. If he just completed one of those deep shots where there was a window for the wide receiver, who knows how this game would have turned out, maybe in favor of the Giants winning. Because now you think about what the game plan might be moving forward mm -hmm. for other defenses. The Giants offensive line did a fantastic job tonight keeping the pass rush at bay. So if you come a across a team that can get to the quarterback, let's say like a Pittsburgh Steelers, right, with a T.J. Watt that can get pressure, now you're going to see those defensive backs not be afraid to press those wide receivers and really force you to make tight window throws at the intermediate and deep level of the field. Dallas wasn't able to do that, and Daniel Jones in his passing game still couldn't take advantage because they wasted an offensive line that did a great job in protection. But Jones did a, a solid job getting the ball out quick, short, intermediate, but deep where you have to have some of those shot plays yeah. in the NFL. He wasn't able to compete. 29 of 40, 281, a garbage time INT. Maybe he's the guy who's not going to lose you the game, but is he going to be the guy that's going to win you the game? He had six minutes and change, down by five. Those are the moments that define quarterbacks. And again, plotting the ball down the field. They convert a fourth down, can't convert a second one. And unfortunately, on that play, the turnover on downs, Malik Neighbors injured with what's being called a concussion. We're breaking no news right now, guys, but Malik Neighbors is here to stay. This is a fantastic talent, ready for NFL action on day one. Another 15 targets, leads the league in targets, did coming in, and I'm sure heading into week five, he will once again. 12 grabs for a buck 15, Mac. When you see this young talent and the speed with which he has come up to speed at a professional level. This is this is not normal stuff. How has he been able to do this? Well, we saw him warming up doing pregame warm ups and he had a T-shirt on that said dog, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> he is a legit dog. I think it was spelled D-A-W-G, not D-O-G. But he is literally that in the football terms based on how he plays the game and he always wants the football. And I'll say this right now for Malik, to Malik, you better get in some real good shape because you're the, the workload that he's asked to handle, you don't usually see from rookie wide receivers. Malik Neighbors doesn't come out of the ball game. Anytime this is a pass, he's probably getting targeted. And by the fourth quarter, you can start to see he becomes a bit gas. We saw that in the Commanders game. We saw it surface a little bit in the Cleveland ball game and tonight. Deserving so because he's getting a lot of action. And he's getting a lot of action Facing the opposing defense, number one corner. We saw Denzel Ward following him last week. Tonight, we saw uh, Diggs following him. So he's getting the opposing defense's best cover guy, but he's asked to, to show up, and he's been able to do so. I mean, that toe-tap potential, toe-tap catch mm. on the fourth down was clearly right there, and unfortunately, he got concussed in that play that you, you mentioned, uh, Joe. But outside of that, man, he has been – Exceeding the expectations when you talk about sustaining the level of success in, in four games of play. He's been able to do that. Listen, he reminds me so much of a more explosive version of Brandon Lloyd in terms of how he catches the football. No football is uncatchable to Malik neighbors, how he runs his routes and gets out of his break and what kills teams moving forward and has killed them so far this season. He is versatile. So you get some receivers like, oh, I'm only an X, or oh, I'm only a slot guy. I'm only, no, he can play receiver. Wherever you want me to line up, we can line them up and we can have success. Also, we saw tonight a little, perhaps a glimpse of how they're going to utilize him. They gave him an end around, little handoff as well. So you got used in a run game, sort of like what the Cowboys have done with C.D. Lamb. So when you look at Malik Neighbors with his elite hands, his elite ability to line up all over the field, you want to bring your number one corner that used to play on the boundary? Inside the slot, why have a two-way go? Good luck. So that's where they can kill defenders moving forward. And they did that with Trayvon Diggs in this game and still 12 for 115. Already some serious ROI on what could be the <laughs> ROI by the end of the season. Look at you. Guys, that, Smith, was, that like was for you. Cannabis over here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to ask you, though, because it's a win. And it's hard to do in this league, especially on the road. Doesn't matter how far or how familiar the foe is. Do you feel any differently about Dallas? than you did coming into this game. Obviously, the run defense showed up a little bit more, and we are hopefully going to get this team and all teams to grow towards a more complete form of themselves. But is this the 13-win team we've seen over these last three or so years? It may not be the 13-win team. It may be a 10-11 to 11 win okay. team because they need a run game. I love the investments they've made along the offensive line. You talk about two rookies starting tonight, center and left tackle. 
a third year player that they dra drafted in 2022 and Tyler Smith right there at left guard. So they've made the investments. Future Hall of Famer and Zach Martin. They got skilled players. They could throw the football. We talked about that pregame. But they have to find a way to generate plays, big plays in the run game or be able to close out games in the run game. Now, you like what you're getting from Hunter Luki, who is a tremendous tailback at North Dakota State. He could be their closer, their four-minute offense guy. But that's where when we were talking about a team that was yeah. winning 12 games, 13 games, it's about the run game. And they don't have that right now. I think at best case scenario, well, I'll say this first and foremost. This year's Dallas Cowboys team, now it's only been four weeks of play that we've been able to really watch and assess what they've done, but they don't look as good as some of the teams we've seen in past, like the past two seasons, especially on the offensive side, right? And to your point, Emory, they can throw the football, but they can't run the football. And they didn't really need a running game tonight because they played against the New York Giants. We don't foresee the New York Giants making any significant run to get into the playoffs, right? A lot can happen between now and then, but right now as we see, we don't see them as a playoff caliber team. But the running game has been an issue. Even a year ago with Tony Pollard stepping in as the future guy, he didn't have a great year, but he's better than any other option they have right now. They had to implement C.D. Lamb in the running back, in, in the backfield as a runner. Think about that because they, they're trying to find a spark right now. So that's an issue. And then when you look at the defensive side, yes, we applaud them. They had a real, real good night tonight. But how much of their success tonight, guys, was more about what they did or more about the opponent they faced in the New York Giants? Once again, the Giants, that's not a playoff caliber team. So I have my concerns about this team, Dallas-wise. I believe they, they're potentially, they're a playoff caliber team because they have that Prescott. But when you talk about having the success that we've seen in, in years past, winning 12 games, potentially winning 13 games, I don't know if that, that, this year's team is capable of doing that. Now, there's a lot of football left to be played, but I'm just giving you my opinion based on what I've seen in four games. Two words. Mm. Deuce Vaughn. Yeah. He is their most explosive back. He's their most elusive back. If you want to spread out and throw the football and spread teams out with that air raid passing offense or get three wide receivers out there all the time, put the guy that could make guys miss in the open field in the backfield and watch your, t your tie turn. So I wrote it down. 42. Give oh, Deuce okay. Vaughn the football. So... You heard it here first, America, and this is uh, how you fix America's team's you, you might, run game. You might lose him back there, though. Bingo. You know, By the time you see him, it's too late. <laughs> you see in the back of his cleat. Emery v -Mac, we appreciate you as we have begun our new week in the NFL, and it is a Dallas winner to lead that week off. One-sided, especially when Dak's got it going. Most consecutive wins by a quarterback against a single opponent. Dak versus the Giants, now tied for the second longest streak in the history of the NFL. 13 in a row and counting.